very much, Lucy. I'm really pleased to have this opportunity today to share with you some of the experiences I gained in the laboratory and um, helping customers here at AVCAM troubleshoot their ICC experiments. Um, and today's presentation is going to be an introduction to ICC principles and troubleshooting. So how do we define immunocytochemistry? So we would um, classify it as an antibody staining technique that's used to study protein expression and localization in culture cells. Um, it's very widely used in basic and clinical research now. Many of our customers are using this. Um, researchers use cell lines in ICC, or many use primary cells as well. Usually in ICC, researchers use fluorescent conjugates for detection. So today, I'm going to be focusing mainly on immunofluorescence. Through today's presentation, um, I'm going to be talking about the following things. So we're going to talk about selecting the correct cell line and culturing the cells, which is very important to make sure that you have a good sample. We're going to take a step-by-step -step look at the ICCIF procedure itself. We're going to take a brief look at how fluorescence works. We're going to take a look at some of the results, um, examples showing different cellular localization, because this is one of the main advantages of immunocytochemistry. We're going to take a look at some considerations to take into account when you're do doing double immunostaining. And then we'll take a look at some troubleshooting. And within that, I'm going to include some considerations for recombinant protein detection. And then I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Augustine, who will take you through some of our protocol resources. So to begin with, what's the main advantage of immunocytochemistry? As I mentioned, the main advantage is that you can visualize the precise cellular localization of your target, and even co-localization if you're doing double staining or multiple target staining. The advantage is that cell line samples are often easier to access than tissue samples, um, so it's easier to get your cell line to stain rather than waiting for some tissue. You can also affect, test the effects of drugs, um, such as mitogens, inhibitors, and stimulators, on the protein expression and localization in the cell culture. And you can, of course, assess the recombinant protein expression and localization. So let's start with selecting the correct cell line and culturing the cells. So to begin with, you need to ensure that you have a good positive control cell line that you know expresses the protein. And the way to do this is you can either do a literature search or you can take a look on the manufacturer's data sheet to see if they've used the antibody in, a, in another cell line that's, that's been successful. When you're actually culturing the cells, there are several things you need to take into consideration. You need to ensure that you're using the correct culture media. And this information you can find again on the manufacturer's instructions or the supplier's instructions. They'll be able to tell you which is the correct culture media to use. You may also find that the cells require some sort of stimulant, mitogen, or some sort of other agent to induce the expression of the protein that you're interested in. Or perhaps you may want to study the inhibition of your protein by some agents. So you need to consider what concentration do you need to use this agent at, or you may need to try a range. Again, you could start by a literature search to find out if there's any information to start with. In preparing the cells, you can grow your cells on sterile cover slips in a six-well culture dish. Or there are chamber slides available, which make staining of the cells on the slide very easy afterwards. The alternative to this is for suspension cells, where you would need to culture them as normal, and then you can cytospin the cells onto some slides. You culture the cells to the desired density. Usually, this is about 70 to 80% confluent, and this usually takes about 24 to 48 hours. You would then wash the cells carefully two or three times with PBS. You can then fix the cells and go on to your antibody staining. 
When do you know when your cells are ready to stain? So this depends on several factors. So although we say that the cells should be about 70 to 80% confluent, this does very much depend on the target. Some cells need to be really very confluent before they start expressing the protein you're looking for in the correct localization. So you may find that this needs to be optimized. If your cells are under-confluent, they may not have expressed enough protein yet. Uh, for example, some membrane proteins, um, secret cell junction proteins, they may not be expressed in the correct localization because they're under confident. You may have to wait until they're really become quite confident before you can see them. If the cells are over confident, you may have some dead and dying cells in the culture, and this could affect your, your staining results. Um, also, proteins can degrade and change localization in dying cells if they're necrotic or apoptotic. And take this into consideration. Another thing you may need to consider is growing cells on matrix. Sometimes you require matrix proteins for expression of your proteins, and you can do literature for this. An example of this would be that collagen 1 promotes the expression of cell junction proteins, such as E cadherin and B cadherin. So you can buy some collagen 1 gel uh, that's sterile that you can um, layer onto the cover slip before you then grow the cells. So again, check the I'm sorry, we seem to have had some technical difficulties here. I'm going to go back now to our slide on growing cells on matrix, and we'll continue from there. So as I was mentioning, you may need to grow your cells on a matrix, for example, on collagen 1, to induce the expression of the protein you're looking for in the correct localization. And we would suggest to check the literature to make sure that this is or isn't required.